I'm Sarah Gore with Open House. We have a great show for you this week filled with memorable homes, including this truly historical homestead in Brooklyn. And we visit this mid-century style ranch house in Atlanta. Plus, this storybook estate in Los Feliz and this Westchester Modern. But before all of that, we are with this sought-after designer with a very personal project, his own home. I wanted to bring this old 1930s house into today, but to do it in my own way. Welcome to Open House. Today I'm coming to you from this fabulous Fifth Avenue apartment in the heart of Manhattan's nomad neighborhood. Check out the 20 foot ceiling heights in this living room, which gives it the feel of a great room in some stately manner. And as you look around, you just can't help but notice the views. I mean, we are on the 50th floor after all. And those views carry you right out into this rare urban loggia. The loggia also happens to connect to the ultra stylish chef's kitchen. There are three bedrooms, including a serene principal bedroom, which is the perfect place to prepare for or wind down from your day. In all, this over 2,300 square foot apartment is an elegant retreat that puts the city at your feet. Let's start things off in the mid-city west area of Los Angeles with sought after designer Jeff Andrews. Jeff is also the author of The New Glamour, Interiors with Star Power, which shows how even the smallest design gesture can completely change the vibe of a space. This is a design philosophy Jeff truly lives by in his own home. See for yourself. Hey, I'm Jeff Andrews and I'm an interior designer and author here in Los Angeles and I design homes for a lot of A-list celebrities, but this is the house that I designed for myself, so I want you to come on in and take a look. So the first thing that drew me to this house was this beautiful sunken living room, and in an old Spanish house, like you have to look for architectural details that really like speak to you and make you feel like you can make it your own. And I was so drawn to the vaulted ceiling in here. It makes the room feel so gigantic. What I did was repainted the beams in a darker color and I put a grass cloth in between them because I'm really into texture as far as my design goes. The second thing I did was design my own fireplace out of marble that I wanted to be subtle but also kind of contemporary because I wanted to bring this old 1930s house into today but to do it in my own way. So I went with a monochromatic color palette which I'm always drawn to so I, I pick one color and I kind of expand on that theme. I didn't go with a traditional furniture layout. Layout. I just brought furniture I already had and kind of added to it piece by piece for the way I like to live in the room. For a while my office was in my house so this became my own office. I love it for parties, I love it for every day. It's a formal room without a television and I feel like having a room that just speaks to exactly who you are as a person is really important for how people are living today. So still here in the front of my house is the dining room. I chose to design this room around a lot of pieces that I've actually designed myself. So the chairs were designed by me and made by A. Rudin. The wallpaper is designed by me. I mixed it with a lot of vintage elements like the light fixture and the sconces that I had made. It brings me joy, this room, and it's a fun room to entertain in because it's not too precious and not too formal. It's definitely one of my favorite rooms in the house. This room really drew me to the house. It has this old paneling that I thought was so cool, but it was painted white like 500 times. So I stripped that and turned it into this really cabiny type, wintry, cozy room with an original fireplace that I left exactly the way it was. I put a TV in here because we have movie nights in here and it's just, it's one of those rooms that draws you to it and everybody, whenever they come over, we always end up in this room. It just feels like home. So my bedroom, dressing room, bathroom, was the biggest renovation that I undertook with this house and it took me a couple years to figure out exactly what I wanted. And in the bedroom, I went for another monochromatic palette where the curtains blend right into the color of the walls. I custom designed all the furniture. I paid major attention to lighting, which I think is super key to making a house have its own kind of 
of personality. And then moving into the dressing room, it had very small closets as a house from the 1930s would. So I busted it all out and turned it into like a gentleman's dressing room with mirrored doors and everything is behind doors. So it's, it's extremely neat and tidy. In the bathroom, I wanted an all marble bathroom my whole life, which I finally got. And I accented it with brass. So right off the bedroom, there's French doors that lead out to the garden, which is kind of magical and really beautiful. So let's go take a look at that. So the back garden is kind of my oasis. And even though it's, it's on the small side, I gave it a big personality by planting it with really lush plants, tons of succulents. We have a great little seating area where we hang out all the time. And I, I wanted it to feel a little less like Los Angeles and a little more like Miami. Thank you so much for joining me on this house tour. I hope you like my house as much as I do. And I'm working on a new one, so hopefully I'll see you there. Stick around because we've got so much more ahead, including a modern Westchester home with this duo who happen to be partners in both work and life. Welcome back. Now we're in the Westchester town of Rye with husband and wife team Efric and Lisa Brown. Check it out. Hi, I'm Everick. Hi, I'm Lisa. Welcome. To one of our projects here in Rye, New York. This project was all about blending modern and classic. The family wanted comfort and they wanted to be able to entertain, so they wanted a refined look by night, comfort by day. So follow us and let us show you what we did. Here in the dining room is where you'll see a mix of modern and classic, which has become our signature look. The star of any dining room is, of course, the table. And we chose this table because it's modern with classic lines. We surrounded the table with chairs that the family already owned, and we updated them with a pleather that's both durable and comfortable. Above the table, we hung this beautiful piece of art. It just so happens to be one of my favorite lighting designers, Niche Modern. It brings warmth to every dining experience. This room is all about casual elegance. We kept the furniture low profile to accentuate the ceiling height and to not obstruct the views. But without a doubt, the focal point of this room is the stacked stone fireplace. Which we built with the understanding that the TV would be there. So we actually had the TV inset. Which made both the husband and the wife happy. And we rounded this room off with an iconic day bed by Noel. The kitchen is the heart and soul of every home. The architecture of this room with its floor to ceiling glass was created to take full advantage of the views. In fact, my client wanted it to feel like a tree house. So our design choices were inspired by that. Pattern comes to life in the upholstery of the sofa, which we chose to mimic the falling leaves of autumn. You might not know it, but I actually love bright colors but I think they should be used sparingly. So when you do see them, they're just that much more special. And in design, you always want to surprise people with the unexpected. In the principal bedroom, it was all about luxury and comfort because a bedroom is as much about touch as it is about style. To start with, we have this beautiful bed by Linier Rosé. It has really sleek lines and a plush headboard that's accented by this beautiful silk and velvet bedding. We added this yummy deep pile carpet, which feels amazing to step on first thing in the morning. As nice as this room is inside, one of the best things about it is its easy access to outside. Hey, where you been? The bedroom. Uh-oh. <laughs> we hope you enjoyed this tour of one of our favorite projects where we mix modern and classic for a fabulous experience. Thanks for coming. We'll see you next time. Stick around because you are not going to want to miss this rarely seen compound in Los Feliz.
Welcome back. Now we're in the Los Feliz area of Los Angeles for a rare look at this legendary compound. This storybook hillside hideaway consists of five architectural homes nestled amid park-like grounds and meandering paths. As for the interior spaces, well, they're just as memorable. See why. Hi, my name is Patty Rubin. I work for Sotheby's International and welcome to the Van Pelt Estate. You're about to see something incredible. There is nothing like it in terms of acreage, architecture, and history. This property is made up of five homes. It's a true compound and it's on two and a half acres. John Van Pelt was an artist and you can feel it in all the architecture here. You can see it in his choice of products and materials. You will discover how exquisite they all come together. The first thing you're gonna notice when we enter Whimsy Hall is that it looks like a ship because actually there are several original authentic pieces from Jack London's The Snark. An exciting feature in Whimsy Hall is Jack London's anchor that they've made into a chandelier. The oars are displayed beautifully on the balcony and then you'll see ropes from the ship going up in different directions. You know you feel warm, you almost feel Christmas, you definitely feel in a way like you're sailing. As we go down through the property and down a little bit further, you're going to see the pool home, which is completely about entertainment. You're going to notice in the pool house that it's a big hall, and you can just feel that there was a lot of entertainment there. And a really beautiful, old, massive fireplace, stained glass, a little bar, and it looks out on the pool. And it's rumored, and I believe it, that Lucille Ball and Betty Davis were at many pool parties and you just can feel the Hollywood energy of the 20s and 30s. A special feature on the way to our next location are these extraordinary pathways that feature crystals that are perfectly placed to guide you through the pathway. This home was built around acoustics, and you're gonna feel it when you walk in because it's cavernous and lovely and quiet. Myra, who was a great entertainer and a, I understand a great singer, would stand up on the balcony and sing out to her friends, and you could hear a pin drop in this living room. Thank you so much for coming on this tour. You'll never see anything like this in Los Feliz, but I hope if you visit, I can bring you here. Coming up, indoor, outdoor living down south. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Now we're on a tree-lined block in Atlanta for a look inside this ranch-style home. There's plenty of indoor-outdoor moments actually designed to transport you to a state of holiday bliss. Not a bad design goal. See what I mean. Hi, I'm Kelly Boudreau with Harry Norman Realtors. It's such a pleasure to welcome you to Atlanta. Today, I'm gonna to take you on a tour of this elegant and comfortable home located right here in the heart of Sandy Springs. Upon arrival, you'll notice its resemblance to a mid-Atlantic style farmhouse with its front porch and sleek aluminum windows and doors. You'll feel like you're vacationing in the mountains miles away. It's just as beautiful inside, so let's go take a look. When you enter the home, you pass through the foyer that features large gallery-like walls and a statement staircase. Your eyes will travel through the great outdoors, immediately setting the tone for indoor-outdoor lifestyle that this home offers. You'll also notice how the interiors continue the look of the mid-century ranch. With vaulted ceilings draped in wood beams and the use of organic materials, no detail was overlooked. 
The home was created with entertaining in mind and features an open concept living with dining and kitchen space that's anchored by a limestone fireplace. The living room is spacious yet intimate and is surrounded by expansive windows and glass doors that lead to grounds, a theme that runs throughout. The kitchen is minimal yet functional. The oversized marble island is the focal point and is ideal for both cooking and casual seating. But for a larger group, enjoy your company in the adjacent dining area, which opens to the screened-in porch and expansive backyard. Take a dip in the pool and soak in that gorgeous southern weather. But if you want to take the party downstairs, the lower level features a rec room, a 4,000 bottle wine cellar, and when you're ready to call it a night, the private spaces are as equally spectacular. This two-story residence encompasses six bedrooms with four en-suite on the second level. Owner suite on the main level is serene and sunny, and it's again accentuated by vaulted ceilings. And of course, it looks out onto the charming grounds, reinforcing that country feel. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed taking a look at this sophisticated yet casual home. See you next time. Coming up, we are in Brooklyn for this living piece of American history. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Now we're in the Madison neighborhood of Brooklyn for a tour of this lovingly preserved homestead built in the late 1700s. It's a true step back into not just New York's history, but really the entire nation. See why. Hi, I'm Ira Mont. Welcome to the Wyckoff Bennett Mont Homestead in Brooklyn, New York. Built prior to 1766 by the Wyckoff family, it was a 100-acre farm here in Brooklyn. In 1835, the Wyckoffs sold the house and the farm to the Bennett family. In 1983, the widower of the last Bennett sold the house to my parents, Stuart and Annette Mont. That makes the Mont family only the third family to ever own and live in the home in almost 260 years. The 100-acre farm was slowly sold off with a half an acre of property remaining, the farmhouse and a barn still situated on it. Wandering around the half acre, you sometimes feel like you've stepped into another world with its trees, ivy lawn, and grapevines. It really is like having your own private park. As you approach the house, walking up the center path, you are struck with the typical Dutch colonial front porch. The main front door of the house is at the original Dutch door, as are all the shutters on the house. During revolutionary times, you were taxed on the number of windows you had in your house. You might notice in the Dutch door the bullseye glass. Those bullseye windows allowed for sunlight in the main hall without incurring a tax. Walking into the main entry hall sets the tone for the rest of the house. A lovely cabinet holds many first editions and lots of old study books. Also in the main hall are four portraits. Two are of the writers who were in-laws to the Bennett family. The other two are of Cornelius Bennett and his wife, the Bennetts that actually bought the house from the Wyckoff family in 1835. Off the main entry hall are two parlors, which we call the formal parlor and the informal parlor. Each parlor is a double parlor, one with a fireplace and one without. The family would take coals from the fire into the parlor without the fireplace, which was their sleeping quarters, and warm themselves with those coals. And we have one of those coal warmers still in the house. The first battle of the Revolutionary War was the Battle of Brooklyn. And at the end of the battle, Hessian soldiers who were fighting on the side of the British pounded on the door and demanded to be put up for the night with their servants. While they were here, they scratched their names into two panes of glass. As you leave the informal parlor, you enter the kitchen hallway where the panes of glass with the graffiti from the Hessian soldiers are on display. One of those soldiers was M. Bach, Johann Sebastian Bach's great nephew. Also on display in the hallway is a proclamation from the king, which asked you to turn in neighbors who were against the crown for a reward of 300 pounds.
My parents were always lovers of old homes and antiques, but the thing that convinced them to buy this house was a quote from Gertrude Bennett's book, Living in a Landmark. I often wonder about the future of our house and pray that those after us will love it as we do and respect it for its own personality. That's also my hope for the new owners of the Wyckoff Bennett Mont Homestead. I hope you've enjoyed taking this tour with me. Thanks for watching. Like what you see on the show? Well, be sure to subscribe to our channel. We have so many more beautiful homes to share. How about love? Share these homes, you know?